Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, okay, so I want to talk about communication being key. And yeah, just communication being key. It's in our society as a whole, perhaps by design, I'm not saying anything about that, but um, we're taught to, to overthink everything. We're taught to, that they're really, you know, the way, the way to any kind of answer is to brainstorm or research or find out more information and work really hard and involve everybody else's opinions and everybody just put their heads together and come up with a bunch of stuff that they think. And it's just all about think, 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 think right? Um, and our power has been taken away from us in the sense that we forget who and what we are at our core and at our, yeah, at our core, who we really are, um, is an energy. And a lot of you already know that, but are you practicing it? Are you making your life almost like a walking meditation? You know, are you paying attention to your six senses and everything that you do? Um, are you actually practicing the stuff that you're listening to or reading? Um, it's one thing to fill yourself. I just, just went on, on this walk um, with a guy friend and we were just discussing all of this and it was just like, you know, he, he's, he's like, I inundate with my stuff with that stuff. You know, I'm, um, I'm always listening to that stuff and I'm always, and I was just like, but do you practice it? Do you actually do it though? Do you actually like take the things that are being taught and put them to practice? And then he was like, Hmm, you know, and it, and it is, it's one thing. It's one thing to digest the information and yes, little epiphanies will sneak in and, and come in here and there and whatnot. But I was talking about how everything always essentially comes down to love or fear. So it's like the little devil on your shoulder or the angel on your shoulder, which one are you going to listen to? Um, there is one way is it, like when you start finally dating this person, that you love, right? And they start doing or not doing things. <laughs> and you're, you, there's like a bunch of gaps to be filled in there. Like, did that, what did they mean when they said that? How could they have like, but then they didn't. And then I never had in a head. And you're going to either grasp for comfort by going to the ego or by going to who you are, by going to God source energy. I call it holding hands with God. There's so many names for it. Enlightenment, who you really are, aside from all the, the all the blah about who, who we are, <laughs> all the nonsense and the illusions of what we've created about who we are, you know, a bunch of stories. And we can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about the stories and assuming things and, and things like that. But ultimately, you know, things, things come to you, they work and they happen and it feels good or um, it comes and it stinks and you close the door because it smells, you know, it's like <laughs> forcing anything to happen or making something give back to you or Anything that strain is again is of the ego and it's not of your true self, which also makes it inauthentic and it also makes it untrue. Anything of the ego is just untrue. So are you living? Are you listening to a bunch of lies or are you listening to the truth? And the truth is that everything comes to you at the perfect time and in the perfect way, as it's supposed to, as it's meant to, as it's drawn to you. Um, so are you suffering in the unknowingness of our lives in any capacity in relationships in the world and whatever, are you suffering in that? Or are you at peace? Maybe even bliss, maybe even tickled pink, you know, 
what stories are you telling yourself? How are you supporting yourself or not supporting yourself? Because overthinking it all, thinking you know where they're coming from. It could be for the good or for the bad. I know why they're not showing up for me and why they're not doing this, this thing for me. It's because, and you make a million excuses for this person who's just not, um, just not being meeting you at that vulnerability place. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not, you're being vulnerable. They're not being vulnerable back. That's all it is. That's as simple as it is. Maybe they're not ready for it. Maybe there are, they are, and they're just waiting for the right moment to reveal that, you know, whatever it is you reading into it, especially in a negative light is not going to help. Sometimes if you do that in a positive light and assume a bunch of things and give somebody the benefit of the doubt too, that can sometimes work to your disadvantage as well, though, because um, somebody could just be walking all over you and not even respecting you um, and, and you're just taking it. And, you know, it's like if you're a king or a queen, you shouldn't be taking that either. You shouldn't be taking any kind of ill treatment. If you're king or queen, you're just like it, it, either it works for you and it's in your home with you <laughs> and you're allowing it in your space and in your energy or you don't like it and you don't want to have anything to do with it and it need not be anywhere around you. You know what I mean? You shouldn't have to tolerate anything being in your atmosphere or in your energy that you don't darn well want to be there, you know? So um, ask, ask a lot of questions, ask a lot of questions. And I've been getting a lot of sex questions, a lot of sex questions. Um, I talked to a virgin recently even, or people who become re-virginized in a way because they haven't had sex for so long, or, you know, maybe it's been so long, they don't feel totally confident in what they're doing and, or any of that. And there's so many different degrees. I mean, some of you have had five partners and some of you have had 105 partners. So um, ask a lot of questions, you know, um, ask a lot of questions, get involved. You guys can ask me anything, obviously. And I do have a lot of knowledge, but ultimately all of this is about clarifying and asking a lot of questions. Why is it that you're, doing this or not doing that or why is it that you said that and not in an accusatory way but just like curious like I don't want to assume anything here so can you just tell me such and such and such you know also when it comes to I I mean I I think everybody cover your ears if you're not 18 <laughs> yet <laughs> Go, the, go in the other room. Go in the other room. Nobody underage is allowed to listen to this part, okay? For those of you <laughs> who are virginized or de-virginized, you guys really need, you don't, I mean, some, I was talking to this one woman. She, she said, he came in and like conquered me and ripped me apart and I, and left. And I was like shattered on the floor. And I'm like, wow, you know, wow. Don't, don't put that on your masculine, you know, it, it, it can be painful. It can be, if you, if you, if just it's, it, it can be painful. So <laughs> get a vibrator if you don't have one or a dildo. Um, it's not as, you know, for the, the virgins, like it's not, it's not as good. It's not as good, not even nearly close to anywhere close to as good, in my opinion, as the real thing. It's so different, the rush that you get and the adrenaline and everything that happens that the uh, penetration is like no problem, even if it burns or hurts or it not, not even a problem. Not, it doesn't. But if you're doing that to yourself, whole different thing, whole different thing. It's not fun to do to yourself, but it spares your masculine from um, over the top pain. Like seriously, if you're, you, you just give yourself some attention in that way. <laughs> Just do that for yourself um, because, yeah, just for your masculine sake, do that for yourself. Do that for him and yourself because you don't, you don't, you don't want to make, yeah, you don't want to make him feel bad for putting you through pain and you don't want to be angry at him, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so, and when it comes to any of that stuff that you feel insecure about with sex or any of that stuff, just ask, what do you, what do you like? Just ask a lot of questions. You know, there's so many, so many people you go to have sex with and you just kind of just get into it and see how it works. Um, it could be so much better if you guys like take the time to actually ask a lot of questions. 
What do you like? What do you not like? What do you really, really, really like? <laughs> what takes you over the top? Like what? Like ask lots of questions. Don't just assume. Because then you could also get in a rut of doing the same thing all the time and you just don't have the nerve. So it's like, I, now if I say something and we're, we've already been doing it that way, now they're going to take it as an insult. Maybe you faked an orgasm or something like that. And it's just like, now you're screwed, by the way. Don't fake anything because if you do, you're, you're stuck. Then they'll, th- then they'll be like, I know how to get her there. And they never did get you there, right? So you're cheating yourself from that from the actual experience of being able to have your partner be able to pleasure you in that way. So always be on always, always be honest, but always, especially be honest with sex too, because it's like, don't be afraid to ask questions. I mean, I would take it as like very like flattering. Like I'd just be, wow, you care enough to really like, I wouldn't be like, what don't you know? Because people like things a billion different ways, like a million different ways. I mean, I've talked to so many people who do blowjobs differently, and I'm just like, what? You did what? He, what? You know, and the other one's saying, oh, yeah, well, I blah, blah. And I'm like, I, wh-? and then I tell them, and then they're just like blown away too. So it's like, <laughs> how many different ways can there be to do everything? Like, there's a lot. So, ask questions, you know, ask questions. Okay. So also feel it out intuitively, feel things out intuitively and uh, just don't, don't overthink things. If you're going to do over anything, over communicate, over simplify, over clarify, Um, you know, just ask, ask a lot of questions and don't assume things. Don't jump to especially. And uh, the person that I was talking to earlier was like, well, you know, then my, then my friends start chiming in. Blah, 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 blah. Here's what's go- really going on. And here's what's blah, 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 blah. Here's what she's thinking. And then, and then, and, and then I was just like, again, you're like listening to the ego. Like they totally engaged your ego. They hooked your ego and that's all it takes. And we, we have a momentum build up, built up through a lot of being really lazy (laughs) in terms of being self-aware. We've just automatically assumed things. We've automatically assumed the worst. We've automatically thought uh, we got the story figured out. They're a player and they're not, they're so immature that they're not going to blah, 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 blah. But all of that is your ego. None of that's actual fact. None of that is actual truth because you can't get in somebody else's head. You can try even to clarify and communicate the heck out of everything. And you're still not going to understand the other person. It's, it's really difficult to truly understand where somebody else is really coming from, but you can get closer to it by communicating and not jumping to conclusions and not making up your own stories about what it means that they did or didn't do whatever they did or didn't do. Am I making sense? <laughs> so to work against the momentum that's already built up from all of this practice of being lazy, you really do have to do exercises. Thank you, God, for my misery, Byron, Katie, all the others that I tell you. Being really present in the moment does the same thing. It stops the momentum. But you have to make this moment the most important moment ever. And, like, you can't be stuck in the past over and over and over and over and over. Like, that's an ego trick, too, of, like, I never got the fulfillment that I deserved or I never got the gratification or I never got the apology or I never got, you know, still spin out and spin out and spin out on something that didn't happen in the past. And then you, then you, then you feel like you have to do something to make up for the deficit of that having, having not happened or whatever it is. And you just play it over and over and Oh, what I didn't get. Oh, what I didn't get. Make peace with that. Let it go. Like it's, it's seriously like being stuck in the past is like, it doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense at all. Nothing. I don't care if you've had the worst stuff happen to you that it doesn't have, it doesn't pertain at all to right now today at all. If you don't let it, why would you want to suffer like that and make something that happened in the past even relevant at all? You know, um, that's just con- consciously like choosing suffering and, and you can do it the other direction too, just fretting about the future. 
learn to make peace at the moment, learn to be like, like listening to me and talking to me right now in this moment is the only and absolute most important moment of your entire life. Do you know that there's not, not even any moment that exists outside of the moment that you're experiencing right now talking to me? There is no past, not even five minutes ago does not exist. It does not exist except in your memory. What exists is this happening right here, right now, and this is it. There's nothing happening in the future. There may not even be a future. You don't know, you know? So there's, we were built this way. I'm just reminding you guys of what we are capable of because seriously, it's like if you can really get this principle down and really learn to be really, 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 really in the moment and that's all that matters and you don't overthink anything, then what's coming in the future uh, is just drawn to you and it's really easy. It's not even like, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> it's like it's you. Um, we reward ourselves by thinking that all this planning and, and working really hard got us there or whatever. And to some degree, you know, there was just a lot of divine intervention in there, too. There was just a lot of spirit working on your behalf. But I'll tell you, and I am here to say that I have seen it. You know, when you're really, really surrendered in the moment, um, it just comes like super easy. You know, <laughs> it just happens so, so it just, just like everything just unfolds so beautifully and smoothly and flawlessly that you're kind of blown away. And honestly, it's like you get some of, some of you guys are putting so much pressure, like on when you're um, meeting up with this person that you love, um, either for the first time or again, after years, or maybe you had a falling out the last time you guys talked, or he totally denied his feelings or whatever the thing was. So now there's all this angst and pressure around it, right? If you can just breathe through it and be in the moment, you're going to, you're going to, it's like God, God will whisper in your ear, you know, it's okay. Or here's the answer or here's what to say. And it's just going to come out much more fluidly and naturally. And you're going to be out of your head and you're not going to freak out so much. Just just stay super in the moment. Just stay really grounded in the moment. And you're not going to do anything stupid, too stupid. <laughs> it's when you overthink everything and then you walk away going, oh, why did I say that? Or why didn't I mention that? That was the most important thing. And I went, what? And just always like also just keep in mind, um, you know, you can always go back and explain something or add something or P.S. or, you know. <laughs> I didn't mean to say this. This that's not how I meant to come across. What I meant by this was that, and that doesn't hurt either. To just explain yourself, but I mean, don't go into like paragraphs and paragraphs, just because that gets really confusing. And then the person's like sitting there scratching their head, going, "What the? I don't. What? Huh?" <laughs> Simple and short, and it everything comes down to either love or fear. Either you're listening to the ego on your shoulder or you are being your true authentic self. The beingness, the energy, not the personality. It's easier said than done, yes. And yes, we have the momentum of, of how we've been shaped and formed in our society to be that's been going on for a long time. And we're practically like programmed robots with it most of society, but if you are aware of it and you become more and more self-aware and you really try hard, um, then you can make a lot more headway, a lot easier and more effectively and without so many bumps on the head along the way. Um, if you can try to stay calm, <laughs> try to stay calm, try to breathe, try to stay out of your head and, um, and ask a lot of questions about everything, everything that you want to come to me and tell me that you feel insecure about what well, I'm happy to, to talk to you about those things too. I'm just saying, no matter what, what it is, whatever the subject is, ask them, they know best for them. You know, you could master the perfect blow job and it's not going to mean anything. Cause you're going to go and they're going to be like, I don't even like those. Like, don't even go near that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Don't waste your time. Communicate. Just ask. You know. Um, just yeah, and don't assume. Makes an ass out of you and me, right? 
Okay, so is there anything else you guys wanted me to talk about? I think that's good. I think we're good. That's just a little, just a little talk about life inspired by this little walk I just took with a friend and um, just kind of getting down to the heart of the matter and the simplicity of it all. It's really, we make it so much more complicated than it needs to be. Um, yeah, it's, you're going to be codependent if you're too, if you're too, uh, if you don't keep a certain um, ability to kind of stay pulled back and be the observer, don't get all caught up in the drama or tit for tat or any of that stuff. Just try to just, just, just try to try to be chill and don't overthink it and try to, even if you have to distract yourself or something for a while, just either meditate, do other things, do whatever, whatever you got to do, whatever kind of projects you can come up with or whatever, just to keep out of your head, it'll, it'll help things flow smoother it's really great if you can do like a meditative practice, like art or a project or something like that, that gets you out of your thinking and into doing, you know, that would be, that'd be a good way to do it too. It's a form of meditation, just kind of doing something busy and mindless. So, okay. As always, you can come to me for any kind of guidance on any of the stuff that I talk about in these videos. And um, I'm happy to be there for you. And uh, okay. Have a beautiful day and I shall talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and share them with your friends. Also, feel free to join me at patreon.com forward slash Amy Satori, where I post monthly energy readings, pick a decks, and other goodies for members only, including discounts for readings and being entered to win a free reading at the end of the year. Memberships start as low as $5.55 a month. Sometimes I even put my free collective love readings on Patreon first before uploading them here to YouTube. If you're wanting more information about my show on TuneIn Radio, how to order a personal reading, or other goings-on, you can check the description of my videos for the most up-to-date information.